Week 12 of the NFL has come and gone. There were Thanksgiving games. There was a Black Friday game. Then there was insane Sunday matchups that have us going crazy. There's so much to talk about. We are about to have a lot of laughs. Things are about to get crazy as we head to the final month of the regular season in the National Football League. I'm so happy to have Hayden Nadler and Bars the God here. What's up, gentlemen? What up? Mr. The God, he hear us? Yo, what's going on? What's going on? What's going on, Mike? Mike difficulties. Mike check one, two. Hey, we hear you loud and clear. Oh, man. What's up, guys? How was your Thanksgiving? It was good. I'm not a holidays guy, but Thanksgiving was all right, you know? Love to hear it. Love to hear it. Okay, okay, okay. So... As we talk about this crucial part of the NFL schedule, there's a lot of things to get into. And before we get into the Thursday games, we have to do this again. We are going to open with our favorite team on this podcast to talk about. The New York Jets played the Miami Dolphins in the first ever Black Friday game. Mr. Nadler was in attendance. And boy, Hayden... Obviously, it was a terrible game. 34 to 13, the Dolphins win. And, you know, before everything, we talk about everything that all the implications from this game, you, my friend, witnessed probably one of the most infamous plays in NFL history now. Whether it's the Hell Mary, the Fail Mary, at the end of the going into the first, going into halftime, Tim Boyle throws for a huge. Hail Mary, and it is taken back for a touchdown, which almost seems to be a symbol of the disappointing season that the Jets and their fans have gone through. So besides that, and obviously there'll be a lot of talk about with these two teams. Hayden, I need your reaction to the fail Mary. I mean, there's just no comment. I mean, that's pretty much what the Jets season has been. Every every time you think it's going to – it's the dumbest thing in the world has happened. Every week it gets dumber and dumber. Uh, there's there's really nothing much to comment on. You have Tim Boyle at quarterback. It's what you really expect it to be like. Um, it's really just no, just no comment. You have the, the butt fumble, the Hail Mary, <laughs> as I like to call it now. Um, and yeah, the Jets every week, you know, instead of, you know, like, like someone said, you know, they embarrass themselves in front of a national audience when everyone is watching every year it's on the holidays. They ruin every holiday <laughs> um, Thanksgiving. It's, it's the butt fumble this, um, you know, just, just an absolute train wreck. And the Jets are just an absolute nightmare without Aaron Rodgers. There's just nothing that they could do. Um, Lazard was inactive, a healthy scratch. He's another guy that just not, has not panned out. Just like half of all the Rodgers guys he signed have been absolutely atrocious. Um, you know, if we're giving him all the power on Rodgers, like, you know, he, he knows what he's doing, whatever. Obviously, he doesn't because all these guys that they've signed have been awful. Lazard's been terrible. Cobb's been terrible. Um, Billy Turner hasn't been good. Um, just just everyone that, that he's basically lobbied them to sign has been has been absolutely horrendous. Um the defense, albeit, has been, hasn't played the best the last two weeks, but the defense has been a, a good unit all year. Just they just they're just giving out because their offense cannot move the ball at all. Um, this is the second straight week in which the offense has only scored six points. They only scored thirteen points this week because they got a pick six from Brandon Eccles hmm. and an interception by DJ Reed. So they they actually had um, three turnovers this game for Miami. So um, it was just absolutely infuriating. There's really nothing more I could comment, and we're going to be running it back. Apparently, the, the ownership and the team thinks that the Jets pretty much got a full year because Aaron Rodgers wasn't hurt. Was hurt um, next year? It doesn't matter if he's hurt or not. They, I, the, this is about three years too late for this GM and, and this head coach. They both have done a terrible job. So, and, and I know nothing's going to get better with this GM and head coach next year. So, I mean, uh. infuriating to be a Jet fan. It just there's nothing, literally nothing worse in New York than to be a Jets fan right now because at least the Giants show some heart. With Tommy DeVito, and, and you know he's actually played okay. They're showing some heart, at least, with the Giants. The Jets have just given up and folded, um, which is just absolutely infuriating. It feels like the team has quit on Robert Sala. Oh, Hayden, 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 Hayden. Listen, man, since I met you at the beginning of this year, I genuinely have so much respect and admiration for you. And like anyone who works together for a while, of course, we've butt heads in the past, but 
I mean, just seeing this happen to you and the way you react, it's 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 amazing. This is why I know for a fact that you could be part of this national spotlight thanks to this platform. And you were the very first person I thought of when I witnessed this debauchery. And it's just so crazy how being a Jets fan, you literally see time and time again and this is where people really believe in sports gods and karma and all of that. And it just so happens to have to happen to happen to this Jets franchise. Just the embarrassing plays. I mean, obviously the Knicks have been bad, but they've never really embarrassed themselves. The no, Mets, I mean, yes, the I Mets can Yes, they have, but... I, I mean, know, sure. But, the Jets have the longest bully, playoff bully. streak in, hey, in all... The, long, hey, the Jets have the longest draft hey, in all of North American sports. Hey. Right <laughs> the Giants... And the Giants wasn't doing all that great. Not Giants that aren't long. any better. Gi- Giants since twenty since twenty eleven have been just as bad, if not worse, than the Jets. They've exactly. Been exactly. The Giants, and, I could I could spend three hours talking about just the Jets themselves, but I mean it's listen, like the there's Giants really nothing, wasn't doing. There's really nothing you can do. There's no help. There, honestly, and I, I, I I'm saying this as a Jeff, and I don't really get why you're not playing Zach Wilson. Like I'm not like nothing. You don't you you might as well value out point. of him. Hold on. Like if you're, the season's already Hold over. On. The Hold season's on. already finished. Like, get, see at least what you have in him. Maybe a team nah. will trade up, trade up for him next year. They're not keeping him on the roster, so I don't get what what playing him, what playing him is going to do any worse. This this guy can barely complete a pass. You know, they're, they're throwing behind the line of scrimmage on third and one. They're calling three yard checkdowns on third and fifteen. Like, I don't really understand this play calling. Is just horrendous. It's like they put Matt Canada up or something. Hold oh, on, he, Listen, he's worse. Look, he makes Matt Canada on. look like a. He makes Matt Canada look like uh, Sean Payton. And no, Bill, it's, Bill Bell, third and 20, it's third and twenty-five, and Matt and Matt Canada's throwing checkdowns. Oh, that's even worse. Line. No, we throw we throw behind the line of scrimmage on a third and one. Three he's like, go ahead. Line of scrimmage. He's like, go ahead. Throw it to him. Make him work. Listen, what I'm saying is, Matt, what we not gonna do is we gonna not act like it was in like three, four weeks ago that the um that the Giants just like you know, scored at home or some shit like that. Like, we're we not going – we're not going to – Don't worry. I, we'll get to the Giants for the very next segment. I mean, I, and I don't even want to continue talking I about feel the like because I want to murder like, – if, if I was a New York sports fan, if I was a New York sports fan, right, I'd hate my life. That's all I'm saying. That's I, I all mean, we, it's, I'm it's saying. It's been 14 years that I'm not making the playoffs. So, like, I, you know. The Yankees don't got nothing. Like they, I don't even know. What are we doing out here? Oh, man. I can't <laughs> wait to get it to that debacle you're right the new york sports scene haven't won a title since 2011 and most of the and haven't been in a championship since 14 with the rangers and the stanley cup How about the say all these teams and all these teams have had really really just just hellacious seasons and obviously we'll, we'll save the giant stuff for in a few minutes but with this jets in the jets particularly yeah, it's over. It's done. It's what been, a it was mistake. Done when Aaron Rodgers got hurt. It wasn't just done now. They didn't, have a, plan. They didn't have a backup quarterback. They kept a piece of crap out there. The minute they had to play Zach overall. Wilson again. They didn't have a backup over. plan. It was the yeah, season was and done when he got hurt. When this happened 11 weeks ago, what? I guess you're only you're 100% right. And for everybody who said the season's over, they All were right. right. And this obviously confirmed it. Sure, we want to. Another year, you're wasting a great defense because you can't move the ball. Like another year of this. Yeah, and, you and know, it's not getting better. Bryce Hall is averaging 25 until, points, 25 until, yards until a decide, game. Decide, until this Literally. owner decides to get some balls and say, "Listen, I'm not putting up with this anymore." Like you know, the same crap every year with with uh the Douglas and Salah and Hackett. It's just it's the same thing every year. We're not. It's not going to get any better, even with Rogers helping. It's not this 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 core is this. This regime is rotten at the core, and it's been rotten at the core for three years. If this is not like sucks. a one-year thing, this has been rotten since 2020. And they're going to keep all these people yeah, for yeah, Rodgers. And then they'll mess Blow with us again next year with the, with the, with this blow it up nonsense there. Blow it up. Blow yeah, it just comes up. down. They're not going to blow it up. That's what they should. Do. TNT blow Listen, it up. I, I don't have. A, I don't have. I, I don't even have a comment on this because I'm so sick and disgusted at this crap already. And I and I will be absolutely unhinged if, if this continues. So I, I couldn't. I wouldn't even be a New York fan. Hey, we yes, we get the gist. Um, the only thing to mention the Dolphins. Dolphins did win again, but they beat another bad team. Now let's just see them play well against some team. other ones with um a tougher schedule ahead. But well, I got interesting stuff there. Them. 
I mean, them and Dallas haven't beaten a team over 500. So it's exactly. Like, and they, those are and the two we're going to talk about Dallas. We're going to talk about Dallas. We're going to talk about Dallas indeed. But yeah, so the Jets put the nail in the coffin. And whether you want to take it as I can now be free, I can um, just hang out and not be as wrapped up for the next four weeks, still watch the game, see if they can play spoiler. Um, no, Aaron you, Rod- listen, and also, I'm going to say something. I don't, I don't necessarily, if, I don't want them to tank. I don't want them to lose every game, you know, by 30 points. Like, if you're going to build something, at least build the right way. Build, get, get, win a game or two, build some momentum. Um, you know, listen, or at least if you're going to lose every game, momentum. at least, at least, at least make the games close. So that way, at least you have something to build towards next year. Like, losing every game by 30 points is not going to help. It's going to cause division friction. Yeah, and it's just uh, unfortunately that the the players aren't going to be happy if, they, if this staff comes back if they're just going to give up. So they're going to have to play at least hard the last the last couple of games, and they probably will win a game or two at the end of the season because they play Washington, they play the New England, they play they play uh, Atlanta. Like they they have, they have a couple of games they may steal. Wouldn't it be funny? And this isn't my take, Hayden, but if you truly beat the Patriots on the final game of the year and you finally end. That lose that very long losing streak, and then you'll be responsible for possibly having the Patriots have a number one overall pick, and then getting Caleb Williams. <laughs> it's not funny. Such it's, is it's, life. It's, it's a disaster, but it's whatever. It's whatever happens. All right. Them getting the number one pick isn't going to change the fact that our roster needs to be improved. So <sighs> whether they have Caleb Williams or not, like the roster is terrible. The roster is terrible. One to fifty three. There's so many holes that, that are not just the quarterback. The offensive line is the worst in football right now. One of the worst. It's it's. I mean, unless you saw Chicago's and Chicago's O line is, is pretty awful too. <laughs> Chicago and, and and Minnesota have, have bad O lines too. So if well, that game is a freaking disaster or something, we can let go of the Jets for now and we'll see where they are next week. But as for the Giants and the Patriots, who well, let's be real, played a very bad game against each other, but somebody had a win, and the Giants. Gross. Were- Gross. The Giants won. They edged the Patriots. And um, Tommy Cutlets is, I guess, the greatest quarterback the Giants ever had with the hype he's getting. And I'm not saying this as a hater. I'm Italian, and obviously I'm very happy for our fellow Italians doing well. Maybe the hype is a bit too much. But, I mean, there's nothing to be upset over it. But, you know, good for Tommy Cutlets being able to get this win for the Giants and the G-Men. And I technically they're not out of it. I don't expect them to run the table, but at least giving them some competitive football at the end, we'll take that. And the Jets, whether it's Bailey Zabby or Mac Jones, we know that it is um just going to end a disaster. They are going to definitely get a top five overall pick, and Bill Belichick is probably going to go. And um, this matchup, which really has had some insane had has had insane battles between the two franchises for the past decade. And when they're both at their wits end, it just resulted in a boring football game. But that's all I really have to say here. I'm happy the Giants won. Happy the Patriots lost. But it's really going to be insane how the Patriots are really going to get a top five overall pick and just continue some good strides. But I guess such is life, right? I mean, what do you have to say about both franchises here? Tommy DeVito has actually done a pretty good job this season as an undrafted rookie quarterback. He has a higher passer rating than Anthony Richardson, Will Levis, um, Bryce Young. Um, he's actually done a pretty good job. I mean, he has seven touchdowns to, to three interceptions, Tommy DeVito. The guy has done a really good job for what he's given. Um, and, and to be honest with you, at four and eight, um, you win a couple of games, like you're, you're right back in it. Like so, so give the guy a chance. I mean, listen, there, you you have, you have kind of a lost season right now. But that being said, you win it. Like you win a couple of games, it's gonna be it's gonna be an interesting story because you're playing Green Bay, who Green Bay just beat Detroit right back in the race at five and six, yeah. considering they're only half game behind uh, Minnesota. So that game on Monday night actually is gonna have some playoff implications between Green Bay and and uh, and the Giants. So give the give Brian Dable and his staff a lot of credit for keeping them together in kind of a lost season. Um, it's a completely different attitude and environment in, in, in the Giants than it is with the Jets. I, I can confidently say I trust Brian Dable and Shane more than I trust Douglas and, and Salah. I can confidently say that as a New York sports fan. So credit to them at least that they they um that they at least have been hanging tough and give the guy a little bit of credit. Tom DeVito deserves to be on an NFL roster. Whether or not he wins any, any more games the rest of the season or not, 
he has done a pretty decent job. He's won you some games as an NFL undrafted free agent rookie quarterback. Um, he he's done a pretty decent job, and I think he does deserve a lot of credit for that. Yep, definitely, definitely. Now, one question: Now they are on a buy going. They are on a buy this week, and it looks like Tyrod Taylor will actually be active for Week 14 for the Monday Night Football matchup. My question to you: You start Tommy DeVito. Or Tyrod um, Taylor. You start. You start. Tommy Tyrod DeVito. Taylor. Uh, you, exactly. No, sorry. You start, wait, 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 you start Tommy DeVito. No, 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 now, Tommy DeVito is a young guy. No, 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 no. at four and eight. No, 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 no. Ten points against a slugged out Patriots team. Don't even do it to me. Listen, I'm not telling you, but like he's better than Tyrod Taylor right now. He's better than Tyrod Taylor right now. No, you can't sit there and tell me that. He's an undrafted free agent. You got to give him a chance. What? Oh my God. What are you proving? What are you proving to the team by starting Tyrod Taylor? Like this guy's not um, on Tommy DeVito. Not uh, saying it's been pretty, but I mean, but Tommy DeVito give exactly. the guy a little bit of a chance. It's not been I pretty. I don't it's, understand. It wasn't why pretty with Tyrod. I don't understand why you would play, Tyrod, but the ball was moving why with Tyrod. Tyrod Taylor. The over, ball was moving over with Tyrod. Tyrod. The, the ball I moved. I really more. The offense was more fluid with Tyrod. DeVito stalls out a lot of times. I'm not watching that. I'm not paying. Yo, do, if I was a Giants fan, nine. I wouldn't be what paying for ten about, point big bro, 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 they they beat they beat the uh they beat the the Commanders with Tyrod Taylor. I I want to say it was Tyrod Taylor. Not Tyrod Taylor. They um when they beat him fourteen to seven with he wasn't phenomenal. I mean Tommy DeVito has actually been better. Tommy DeVito threw for two seventy nine, two touchdowns and zero interceptions. He's when? been better. He's been better. Yesterday? Uh, I mean on Sunday. I mean, that, that, I mean versus whoa, the Commanders whoa. he threw for against versus the Commanders who? Tyrod Taylor against threw for two seventy nine and two touchdowns. Against the lackluster versus Patriots. The commanders. Let's see Tommy. Commanders. Let's see Tommy if Tommy DeVito, DeVito's doing that Tommy against Tommy DeVito. Tommy DeVito same numbers had pretty oh. similar numbers also versus the, the Commanders. Tommy DeVito bro. threw for a couple of touchdowns versus the Commanders also. So, I mean, they're also bro. the numbers are getting skewed because they're playing bad teams like the Commanders suck. So, like, no. both, both both quarterbacks played well versus the Commanders. So, you know the what? Commanders, you know what? The Commanders are not exactly a good litmus test. We're going to revisit this Week 12 conversation. Like, we the numbers were pretty this. similar versus the Commanders as they were. We're going to revisit this. I, I think you play Tommy DeVito, honestly. See what you got. I Have think Tyrod Taylor be the backup when he's healthy. Like, that's what I would do. Um, I think you put Tyrod really, back on the field. I, I, listen, at four and eight, they, they win a couple of games. They're still right in it, Matt. I know that's like, you know, a crazy thing to say, but like, nobody's taking it, you know, a crazy so. thing to say. It is at four and eight. They're they're still kind of in it. They're it's not, pure not, madness. Yeah, they're only two games. They're only two games back. So it's like if you really want the team to believe, I mean, they, they, there's a belief in Tommy DeVito. There is there in, is in the in the in the in the two games that he won, man. But when the, when he was in there before, he was and washing. I don't, I don't think they're being Green Bay. I think I think Green Bay is a playoff team right now. With and, and Green Bay is going to crush them. We're going to talk about Green but, Bay in a second. I mean, you, you play you play the Eagles twice. I don't think they're winning either of those games. So I mean, you got a couple more games that are winnable, but like. I don't think Tyrod would in those games either, but I'm saying at least the offense looks more fl- – all right, man. We I don't think look it looks look more fluid with, with, with look Tyrod than it, does, than it does with Tommy DeVito. I actually don't agree with you on that. All right, we'll see. We revisit Here's this the conversation. Thing. Excuse me. Um, so – I'm actually going to have to side with bars on this one. I think you start Tyrod Taylor, the more experienced quarterback with the stakes high on the line. Now, don't so get me wrong. What, Tommy what, DeVito's what good been are, great. What good are you getting from starring Tyrod Taylor? Like, you have a guy, Tommy A more mobile quarterback. What, what good are you getting? A more experienced quarterback. Well, but like, I think – But, like, at the, like you, this is kind of a I'm, – I'm sorry. This is kind of a lost season at 4-8. and eight. Like, Tommy DeVito, at least you could see, maybe this is a guy that's worth being the answer because he was undrafted. He's, he's played pretty well. Tyrod Taylor, I like Tyrod Taylor. He's fine. But he's at the point in his career where he's there's just no upward mobility for for Tyrod Taylor like in in this there's just not. I get like what you're is, saying, Tyra and that is a valid is point. Is. And we'll have to see how if they are going to be in the hunt after the bye week. Like, listen, but I think you have finished, somebody with a better arm. If they're finished, you play Devito, in my opinion. Like, there's no point. Oh, one thousand. I I agree with you one thousand percent. If they are completely out of it, might as well have Tommy Devito play the rest of the year. But if they're still technically in playoff contention. I think you go with the uh, backup quarterback you signed here. He was a legitimate backup quarterback, and honestly, his injury was a freak injury. So um, I'm going to have to see where it goes, and I think uh, I think Tyrod Taylor would be the better option if you're still in it. But if not, then yeah, go with Tommy Ta- DeVito and um, see what you have there, and the and make sure you have meaningful December games. But 
definitely valid points, and we'll ultimately see where it goes. But he definitely, Dami DeVito wasn't afraid of the spotlight these last two weeks, for sure. The Raider game was tough, and obviously the Patriot game, but he's obviously um, turned into a fan favorite, and rightfully so, even if it's a bit too much. Do you think it's a bit too much, or nah, just right? No, I think it's just about just right from one, considering the fact that the, the fans need something to cling on to and, and gravitate towards. And final thing, you saw Joe Shane's comments over this week saying that they are planning to uh, start Daniel Jones next year after he finishes his rehab, whether that's at the middle part of the season or what. But interesting interesting words from the Giants GM. And this probably is a conversation for more for the offseason. They're going to draft the quarterback now. They're, they're going to. They're going to start Daniel Jones, and then if he doesn't play well, they're going to put in the rookie. Which is who, what I hope, and I'll say it on the record here, I hope it's Michael Penix Jr., that he's the one. Okay, let's now go with the Chiefs and the Ro- Las Vegas Raiders. The Chiefs won by a score of 31-17, to 17, and at one point they were down 14 to nothing. And they completely took over on offense and defense. Pretty exciting stuff. Now, this game, if the Chiefs lost this game, there would be some interesting questions today. But no. Their um, second half adjustments were pretty impressive. And now the Chiefs look like they have some major momentum going in to uh, next week. And uh, also a return game for Travis Kelsey. Uh, Respect to this Raiders team who clearly loves playing under Antonio Pierce. He really can make a case to uh, be the full-time head coach and take the interim off his uh, marquee. And But regardless, the Chiefs at least showed us, when push comes to shove, I think that they can um, be a pretty good football team out here despite their uh, continued issues with the wide receiver position. But what do you have with this game, Hayden? I mean, I mean, just with this game, like, I mean, this, there's not really that much to talk about. The Chiefs are just, they have the best quarterback on the planet, and the Raiders have, have Aiden O'Connell. That's it. That's really <laughs> the difference in the game. There's not really not that much to talk about. Like, Patrick Mahomes, when push comes to shove, can put up points with anyone, any quarterback in the history of the NFL. And that's including Peyton Manning, it's including Tom Brady. He's probably, right now, he's one of the greatest to ever play. He is. And he shows it every week. So, really not much else to say. Um, just kind of are lousy. Um, Pacheco has done a, a decent job running the ball. Their defense this year is, is what I think is going to help. Why I think the, the Chiefs are going to come back back to the Super Bowl, but like I think their defense. But there's really just not much to say. It's Aiden O'Connell versus Patrick Mahomes, and I am not saying Patrick Mahomes is the MVP this year because I actually don't think he is. I think there's another quarterback in the league who is the MVP, who I will talk about on the podcast. Um, but I mean, Patrick Mahomes is the best best quarterback to play right now. And he shows it every week. Do I think he's the MVP? No. Because um, I think he's the best. I don't think he's more, I, I, I don't think he's as valuable as, as another quarterback that we'll talk about later in, in the podcast. But just, I mean, at the end of the day, it's just it's Mahomes versus Aiden O'Connell. There's really not much to say other than the fact that, that Mahomes put the team on his back like he does every week. Very crucial for him to put his team on the back. Um. Maybe maybe if this was quote unquote an off year for Mahomes, maybe in December he's finally shown who he is again. No, and they're, they're making the case for that. There, it's just their defense is is tremendous this year. Which credit to Steve Spagnuolo, he's done a really good job with that defense. Hmm. Um. Absolutely, and getting Chris Jones back was very. And it crucial. doesn't. It doesn't. It doesn't matter. Um. Like who's coaching this team? Oakland, uh, not Oakland, uh, Vegas. They just don't have enough talent right now. They they don't. Like at, they have enough talent at, at some of the positions, but they don't have the quarterback. And until you get the the, the long term answer at quarterback, like they don't have a CJ Stroud, they don't have a like Trevor Lawrence. They just don't have that guy right now. And Aiden O'Connell's fine. Like Aiden O'Connell's going to be in the league. Like he's he's pretty decent, but he's he's just not that dude. So that's it. That's really there is all all there is to talk about. I think there's a lot more to talk about with this game though, with the Eagles and the Bills playing a thriller late Yikes. in the late window on Sunday night. So the Eagles rally and stun the Bills in overtime. Yep, it seems that the Bills messed another game up, and um, I think they're going to have a pretty ugly ending. Or yes. what do you think? You don't think I so? I don't see it. I don't see this as, as a game the Bills messed up. I mean, they're 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 own Josh Allen including overtime zone six. 
Josh Allen is, is playing on every field. Like, it is not at all Josh Allen's fault this year. Um, the defense just hasn't made um, – he hasn't made – they haven't made enough plays um, to, to win games, okay, in, in these tight games, all right? And that's just some, something – because Josh Allen's a star. Jo- Josh Allen is awesome. He is not the reason that they're they not making the playoffs. Like, he's not. Their defense – he made you the plays. He put you up three points. Like, you got to win that game. You know, Jake Elliott makes a 60-yarder. But I'm telling you right now, uh, you can have this on record – Jalen Hurts is the most valuable player in the league right now. There, there, there is no quarterback in the league who I trust more in crunch time than Jalen Hurts. He's the most valuable player. He's the most clutch player. And all the guy does is win football games. And that's the difference. Jalen Hurts makes the plays that, that needs to be made every single He's not the most talented quarterback because he has mid-tier arm strength, if I'm being completely honest. Like, I think Patrick Mahomes is a better quarterback. I think C.J. Stroud is probably better. Josh Allen is more talented. Um, there's just a there's a couple of guys. There, when Burrow went healthy is better. Herbert has better arm talent. Like Jalen Hurts does not have the arm talent these other quarterbacks. But honestly, right now and last season, I have not seen a quarterback ever in my lifetime who's as smart, who's as mobile, who's as maybe not as mobile because because Lamar Jackson is five thousand is the quickest quarterback ever to rush for five thousand yards, eighty two games I believe, or around eighty five games to rush for five thousand yards, which is twenty less than the twenty less than uh, the next previous person, but. Jalen Hurts also has 11, 11 rushing touchdowns, which is almost almost an NFL record for a season. So, Jalen Hurts at the end of the game, when you have to have one play to be made, is the quarterback I would take to have to have right now, and he would be my MVP right now. I mean, in those big games, in the in the when it counts, Jalen wins. And this is this isn't an indictment on Josh Allen. Josh Allen's awesome. If there was any other team that they were playing, they probably would have lost that game. The, the other uh, I, I disagree. I think this is an indictment on Josh Allen. You got to win these big games. Nah, you got to show. Josh Allen you got to show that you're that out. guy. Josh you, Allen nah, balled out. He's on the hot seat this season. This season, Josh, 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 Josh Allen balled out in that game. He was. He was. He was spectacular. Yeah, but he it didn't was just win. another quarterback making didn't win. another quarterback playing out of his mind. Didn't win. Jalen Hurts proved that in those big games against those big names, he can get the W. That's what really matters. And I'm going I'm to sit here and I'm going to agree with you on top of the fact that he's probably the most valuable player in the league right now, like legitimately. Uh, and uh, and that's that's not to say he's the best quarterback because I don't. I think Patrick Mahomes is a better quarterback. He is the he's, most yeah. athletic quarterback. He's, there's about five or six guys who I can honestly say are, are probably better quarterbacks. Like I think uh, – and and I think another guy who's pretty underrated in, in the talk is Tua Tagovailoa. We'll talk more about that later. Ah, uh, that, You know we'll what? Last year, can I have that conversation fully this year? Without all the injuries, we can actually have that talk now. Yeah, I mean, I mean, if you're gonna make an argument for another quarterback, in my opinion, it would be Tua. That's the honestly like, but we're if we're talking about like accuracy, arm strength, Q, like QB, like awareness, like like IQ. There's no quarterback Tua in the league in is my top opinion. Five. Who's what? What'd you hey, say? what what would you what would you say about um some of the criticisms to McDermott this season though? Oh, we hating. You're muted. You're muted. No, I'm not. It's... Your audio chipped out. Oh, you're back. Yeah, no, it's. I mean, I, I would say Sean McDermott should be should be getting a little bit on the hot seat. I I agree, but I mean, I I don't really think it's. It's more. Uh, they have they have good talent all around, but at, at the same time, you're you're seeing at the end of the day, there's too many injuries on on the defense side of the ball. But I mean, the the the, the, the their window is ticking. Um. I think there's a couple other teams in the AFC who are, are better positioned right now. And we'll see. I mean, they played Philadelphia, so it's hard to really put too much stock in that game. But, I mean, it is, it is as a Bills fan, it must be pretty frustrating this season. It is frustrating, but um, we're, I want to see how the rest of this month goes for the Bills. I mean, the for these Super Bowl favorites in here, the Bengals, their season's done with no Joe Burrow. Um We'll see what the Bills are. The Chiefs obviously will be fine. But um, I like things looking a little different than what we expected. But the Eagles, do we? is there anything also about the Eagles with their low point differential that though they are not a 9-1 team, some people say like they're not playing like, a t- excuse me, 10-1 team. Some people say, oh, this team isn't playing like a 10-1 team. There's, there, I would, I would say that's ridiculous. They win. Every I would game. disagree with that wholeheartedly. They win every game. They, they win winning. every game when it matters. They're winning, like legitimately. Like you tell me where they're not a ten and one team. Like their defense is holding out. Their offense is scoring. Like you, 
They're literally winning games minus that one muff up, like literally. Yeah, exactly. It, it, that's the point. Do you want your championship winning team just to win games or dominate? Yeah, they haven't really been dominating this year, but you know that's just a conversation between the hardos and the regulars. Like what? We want to dominate like the Cowboys and the Dolphins and not win and not win against like good teams, or we want to like I don't know win these games and like and do, like I, I don't know. To me, hey. the W is the domination. There you go, man. There you go. And moving on, we had the Broncos and the Browns play. The Broncos won their fifth straight game. Called it. They started one and five and now six and five. And they're making a real case to be a playoff team. And that's my first question here. You know, the Browns, no Deshaun Watson seems like despite having the best defense in the league, giving up the least amount of points, um, it's going to be tough for them. And they won't go really much farther without Watson. But for the Broncos... Answer me this, guys. Are the Denver Broncos making the playoffs? Yes, 100%. With Russell Wilson. Yeah. Peyton, I, um, I will I think say the that. Broncos, I think the Broncos are, are going to be the, gonna be that seventh spot. I think it's going to be the Broncos, and I think it's going to be uh, the Texans. No, actually, actually, yeah. I, I don't know. I actually don't know about the Texans because I think the Texans may be a year. Although C.J. Stroud's pretty amazing. Um, they, I think the Texans sneak into that wild card. I think it's going to be the Broncos the, and the Colts, actually, because the Colts have the easiest schedule. I think the Texans beat the Colts out. I mean, just look at the Colts' schedule moving forward. The Colts have the Colts have the easiest schedule in the NFL coming. And up. Jonathan Taylor is back, so you know what we gonna re- we gonna rethink that one. I, I think I think the Colts are gonna. Pa- I think the Colts and the Broncos are gonna pass the um the Browns. And uh, honestly, let's th- let's talk about the Browns' defense real quick. You said the best. The I think for some strange reason, that's a, like or like they're they're like I think they're like over glorified. I think they're overrated, y'all. To be honest, I'm trying to figure out where yeah, the, Browns defense, the Browns defense is pretty good. They're good. Yeah, they they, they the do. Best. They give up the I least mean, amount it's, of it's, points. It's, but it's hard. It's, it's hard to say. It's hard to say because their offense is so bad. So you can't really see. Yo, it's, but it's like they. Uh, it is hard to notice. But Miles Garrett is Miles is a hall is a Hall of Famer at this point. Um, really solid defensive backs, and Miles Garrett was pretty quiet though that game. Well, uh, Bull, Bull, uh, Garrett Garrett Bull, uh, took him out. Right. So, but regardless, they have it. It, it is a testament of the frustration oh, of having a offense that is anemic and then a defense that can do no wrong. But like you it can't is really what see it how is. Great, you can't really see how great the defense is. No, not really. So, you just have to look up the stats every week to prove that point. But I mean, so sad, so sad. But you're right, guys. The Broncos. Um, what they've been turning into is insane. I think Cortland Sutton is finally turning to the receiver. Everybody wanted him to see, wanted him to become. Shane Perrine has been tearing it up at the running back position for the past couple of weeks too. They are protecting him. Um, and the Broncos' defense is a good one as well. And you know, obviously Sean Payton, both on a PR standpoint and on the field, could not have been more of a disaster. But I guess when they got 70 spot, something had to change. And they're being really disciplined ever since then. Yo, I'm just, I just got to, I just, I just need to know how the Browns got the best defense. When minus the, minus the, the 30 game to, to the, to, to, to the uh, 49ers and minus the 30 game to the Texans. We don't – teams ain't scoring more than, like, 22 points I mean, I would on say, us. I would say the best defense in the league is actually the Ravens. That's what I would say is the best defense. In the well, it's, it is statist- they, they're statistically the best defense, and they don't give up as many touchdowns as other ones. But I understand your point. Where, where is this – where – I understand I'm your point completely. The, I'm looking it's, at the Steelers, it, man. Like, like, all right, you know what? I do say we give up a decent amount of touchdowns. Like, I will say that. So if they're statistically looking at it like that, but if we're looking at like points per game, like teams ain't scoring like that. Like <sighs> I know. And they also give up the least amount of yardage too on average. So um yeah, that's, a te- that's a testament that's attested to a very impressive defensive line, but you know, that's again the game all the numbers at that point. Run. I, but I think with the, the like, Hayden, who did you say one more time? I think the Ravens running? have the best day. Yes. And then um, 49ers are a stellar defense as well. But um, it's just interesting stuff. 
But speaking of the Ravens, they beat the Chargers by a score of 20 to 10, and they forced four turnovers in the game. And uh, Ravens played a calculated offense, and um, the Chargers clearly are begging for a new coach at this point. Brandon Stanley seems to have lost this team. Um, we talked about it the week before uh, and how his press conferences get more and more cringe. And the Ravens just keep flying by and getting ready. And they will at least try to make a push for the home field advantage. Uh, unless uh, the Chiefs lose a couple of games this month. But Lamar Jackson played okay. Didn't cross the 200 mark in yardage, but he at least showed how valuable Zay Flowers can be. Odell Beckham keeps improving game after game. And despite Mark Andrews' injury, they seem to be okay at the tight end position as well. But what stuck out with these two te- the teams this week for you guys? I mean, it just stuck out the the, the Ravens D is for real. The Ravens D is awesome. Um, I mean, I'm not I'm not comparing it to the 2000 Ravens, um, but I actually think they're they're giving up the fewest points per game in the league um, this season. Um, this is this is one of this is one of the best defenses I've seen Baltimore have in a in a very long time. Probably probably the best defense they've had since 2006 when they had Rex Ryan. Um, their their defense has been awesome. Um, they rank number two in the league right now. Um, they've given up, you know, um, they, they've, they've done a really good job on Dave. And like, I, I, someone, someone said something recently on a quote, I'm trying to find the quote, but, um, one of the, their old guys say that, um, they have one of the best defenses. They, they basically said like, although this is not the 2000s defense, this is, this is a really, really good defense. And I think there's, I'm actually surprised how, how good the defense has been in the, in the AFC. Like there's a couple of really good defenses, like, Cleveland's got a very good defense. Um, Kansas City has a great defense. Uh, Baltimore does. So I think a lot of these games are going to be a lot more low scoring in the playoffs than people would think. Like a 17-16 game, maybe, maybe the maybe the score in a game that determines uh, who's going to the Super Bowl. Man, I'm just tired. I'm just tired of these charges, man. Like they disappoint me. I'm not going to sit here and and act like this game was like. Interesting, like yeah, uh, kudos to the Ravens. I hate the Ravens, so I, I I really don't want them to win anyways. But man, like, is this a Justin Herbert thing or is this a coaching thing? Um, I think it's a little bit of both. I mean, Justin Herbert can't is not one of the big game when it matters most. His record as a starter is thirty and thirty. Um, so I do think I do <laughs> wow. think in, I do think actually like when when the game matters the most, he kind of comes up small. So I mean. I think I think it is I think he's a little overrated to be honest with you. It doesn't help that he has Brandon Staley as his coach. Um I think I think it's more like a, a psyche thing for, for the, the Chargers. Yeah. And I don't know. Does he have the ability to get out yeah, of that they're, psyche? They're, they're being the Baltimore defense is being compared to um to the two thousand Ravens. I mean, who did they pick up? Uh Ro- Roquan Smith really turned that uh defense into like something that's different. Like I'm not gonna sit here in front. That defense has really changed. They picked up a couple other pieces that I really look at it. And what is that? Uh, Kyle Hamilton. Last year he was a rookie. He showed a lot yeah, of they're, defenses. They're giving it's up the uh, they're giving up the second fewest um yards per game uh, behind minus uh, minus Cleveland. And Lamar Jackson hasn't had a stellar defense behind him in his career so far. And maybe that's a difference maker. Excited yeah, to, to see how this push will make up for his bad play sometimes. Because as good as a quarterback he is. He has low IQ in my in my yeah they're they're the, they're the second they've allowed they've allowed actually only sixteen total touchdowns which is the fewest in the league they've actually allowed nine fewer touchdowns than the uh than the Browns so that's interesting the next very closest, good team the second the second closest team defense would be um the is the uh, I have it right here is the Forty ers very good team it's a very good team. So the Jaguars and the Texans played each other. Big divisional game. Jaguars hold on and win by a score of 24 to 21. Do you think the Jaguars proved they are worthy after this big game, big win over Houston? Um, yeah, I do, actually. I do. Uh, they The Jaguars have been just – they've been finding ways to win. Um, Doug Peterson has done a great job as, as head coach. Um, and I think this is the year where they, they – they're – they're just slightly better than, than the Texans this year. I think the Texans are, are a year away. This this year is, I think, the Jaguars. Um, I think the Jaguars will win 11 games and win this division. 
Um, but that being said, the the, te- the Texans are closing the gap, and I think that the duel between C.J. Stroud and Trevor Lawrence is going to be one of the best quarterbacks duels in in, in uh, all of football com- in years to come. And I also I think like Indianapolis that. too. If if Anthony Richardson can stay healthy with um the job that uh, Shane Ste- Steichen has done as the coach for the Colts, um they're going to be pretty good too. So that's good. It's going to be an interesting division. Definitely, definitely, and give credit to Houston with a lot of very young rookie and second year players playing. I like think this. this is more that Jacksonville is ready to to win these close games. Um, do I think they're as good as the Chiefs and the um? The Chiefs and the Chiefs and the Ravens, just based off the eye test, no. But that being said, I did make a prediction at the beginning of the season that they would be the number one seed, so I'm going to stick with that. Um, they've won a lot of the games. They've won a lot of tight games. So, and you get to play the next two weeks. You get to play the Bengals and the and the Browns two games. Which I, to be honest with you, I think they can win and should win those two games. Um, and the schedule eases up, and then you play Tampa, and you also get to play the Panthers and the Titans. So the schedule is looking really, really favorable. I mean. So, I mean, minus minus that Baltimore game, I also agree that they could win four out of the, those four. Like, uh, excuse me, five out of six of those last games. Yeah, they they, uh, they could. Legitimately, I think I think they handled the Browns. I think they handled. I think they. I don't think it's gonna be a a, a like you know a, like a, a easy win against either the Browns or the Bengals. Maybe more so the Bengals than the Browns because the Browns have a better. I mean, defense. it's still like. Like all these teams surprise you too. So like Carolina, like Tampa Bay, they could come out like the NFL is a lot of parity. So one of these teams could be Jacksonville, but I mean I do think they'll win majority of the games to finish the season. But you've the seen Jaguars. how Jack, you, but the Jags don't play good against great defenses either. Though you kind of got to look at that. Like this year, they they played some pretty good defenses. They did get shut out game. by forty the Forty ers Yeah, they they lost their they they got they got smacked versus the Forty ers and they lost to the Chiefs. So so if we're looking at these defenses. I'm a re I'm a re I'm a I'm gonna I'm take that back and say I got them winning at least four out of six of these games guaranteed. But I also agree with you as like um I had I think I had the Jaguars too as the number one seed in this uh in this one too. Uh but I I I don't know, like the Texans, they seem really, really strong. I gotta look Texans at are strong. Goal. I just I think I think they're a year away. Like, yeah, I but what they're the accomplishing with a rookie head coach, no, and no, young players. I agree with you on that. Cool. CJ Stroud's going to be the next. CJ Stroud's incredible. Their and next Tank game, Dell, Tank Dell has been great. Um, their next game is probably going to be their hardest game um, for the rest of the season. Legitimately, um, it's outside of probably that Browns game because Russell Wilson is probably the best quarterback he's going to play. Uh, like they're going to play like outside of that, but after that, they got the Jets. Which is also a really good defense, but they, Jets, they, they, the they, Jets can't they move the great. ball versus me. Mm-hmm. I mean, the Jets' offense is atrocious. So, and the Texans' defense is actually looking. Yeah, Texans, really good. Texans have an easy schedule coming up too. They get they besides the Broncos, you play the Titans, you play the. the besides Browns. the Broncos and the Browns, I'm not going to give and it. To I DTR, will say though, I'm going to give it to that defense maybe. I think if they were going overtime, the Texans would have had a real good shot to win that game. Yeah, no, I, 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 do, too. I yeah, do too. I do too. I agree. Which would which would dictate how different this conversation would be. I kind of wanted at, them to. Oh, I did too. I had them at plus one and a half. Um, and I wanted to make a push this, for that. We talk about CJ Stroud till next week if he did. But that crossbar, he had the it just missed it, and then he got waved right after. It must suck to be a kicker in the NFL. You really have to be perfect one hundred percent of the time. Reckon that is your job, but that, no I mean, for error whatsoever. You, now you really only get on the field like how many times now? But make that shit, make that stuff count. I know fifty-eight yards, but just five yards under the uh, record, and yeah, too bad. The Steelers and the Bengals played each other. The Steelers won sixteen to ten, four hundred twenty-one total offensive yards without Matt Canada after firing him this week against a Burrowless. Cincinnati Bengals team. The Bengals are under 500. Let's be real. The season is over for them. Bye-bye. Um, but the Steelers can make a push for the playoffs. The I mean, God. Talk to me. Or Hayden, you go first. No, 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 no. Bar- Bars can go first. He's, he's got the tell. Yeah, listen. Let me tell you what's up. Honestly, I will tell you what every Steelers fan says. We knew this day would come. You fired Matt Canada, and we're back in the 400 club, baby. But I will say that 
the amount of yards we put up um, don't equate to the amount of points we had. But I will say, um, had somebody in that booth contacted Tomlin like, yo, challenge that touchdown. The score looked a little different. Kenny Pickett's stats look a little bit different. Kenny had a great game. They was talking, they was talking mad junk about Kenny. Even I was talking junk about Kenny. I'll give him that. Excuse me. But our running game has looked phenomenal since Project Jones has got up on there. Um Warren's legit. Jalen Warren is like a monster. I don't know what to say. Najee Harris woke up. I don't know. Maybe the threat of Jalen Warren has like lit a fire under his dreads and he's taking the lead shoes off. But even but maybe or maybe he's kept them on and realized how to use them. But you saw that one play where it looked like it, the ball was dead and then he just pushes through like like the entire line and gets like five more yards. Like it's ridiculous. Like the Steelers, the Steelers offense, we got um uh Coach Sullivan and um Eddie Faulkner. They're both the um interim interim uh, offensive coordinators and play callers. Right now, the Steelers are trending up. We look like we can take the playoffs. Let's see if we can sustain this. Pat Fryer moved his back. We opened up the middle of the field. We've addressed a lot of things that um fans have been crying about, um, asking for. There's a, still a lot of things that I see that could stop. Um, they could throw a lot of plays out. Um, on top of that, Kenny, Kenny is getting better, but he's missing some plays that me as not a quarterback, I could see that. And I'm like, you know what? That would have been a better play. He missed one of Darnell Washington. He missed one of um, Pat Firemuth. But other than that, the Steelers are looking great. I'm sorry for the Bengals. Um, uh, Joey Porter Jr. is looking like a lock this year. Um, a couple of ticky-tacky fouls, but it is what it is. They got to work through that. He's a rookie. You know what I'm saying? Pat P. has really turned his season around. Going from like looking like the old man in the sarcophagus to looking like he got some juice back in his system. A lot of uh, injuries really slowed us down, but you got people from the practice squads coming to make uh, uh, interceptions, big plays. The Steelers look like they're back. Um, and I just got to take a quick look at the rest of our schedule, but honestly, I think we have a solid shot in the playoffs. Like, in one of them big, like, honestly, I think we're good this year. I don't think we win in the Super Bowl, but the Steelers are back, baby. I you mean, agree, yeah, Hayden? They had some type of offensive explosion. It's ridiculous. They scored 16 points. You still have Deontay Johnson, who's just like <laughs> looking like, oh, 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 like, where's the ball? Like, the ball's right in front of you, dude. Like, show some effort. <laughs> so there's like, there's everyone's there's knocking still, him on that, but there's, there's still, there's still some concerns I have. Um, do I think it was better than what they've been in the past? Yes. It was the first game they, they outgained someone all season. So I'll give them credit for that. Um, the defense is, is really, really good with TJ Watt. Um, Joey Porter Jr., like you said, the defense is two really and a half good. sacks. Um, the defense is really, really good. Um, so they're going to be in every game. I, I think they should make the playoffs. I think they have they're very similar to the Browns, but they have a slightly better. Um, I think they have a better running game, and I think they also have a better quarterback. So that's why I think I I think I would give them a slight advantage over finishing the season over over Cleveland. I think Kenny Pickett is better than any quarterback the Browns have. So I think the Steelers should be a playoff team this year, um, but. I mean, we'll say the defense is, is really, really good. So, I mean, if Kenny Pickett can start to play well, um, Kenny Pickett is a winner. He's won at, at he won at the University of Pitt. Um, he's he's great in crunch time. I actually think you have a quarterback that, although may not be the most, although the may not be the most uh, surprisingly Ex- or explosive explosive quarterback, um, he does make the plays when it matters the most in all seriousness. So. Um, I, I actually am hearing right now that Kenny Pickett has a surprise ankle injury, so yeah, that's something you have to monitor um, moving forward, um, which is which is interesting. Um, so hopefully he can kind of move around, but he's going to be on the injury report th- coming up. So um, they got to see they got to see how he is because he's dealing with an ankle injury. So it's going to be interesting if they can you know. They Ooh, can, uh, that would mean the return of Mitch he will Trubisky. Be, he will be when limited in practice. Don't but wish I that you Mitchell Don't Trubisky. wish that you I also think Mitchell Trubisky is one of the best backups in the league, if not the best. Actually, I think he's do not. Do not wish that evil on me, Ricky Bobby. Did, Rick, Rick, Mitchell Trubisky is the best. He came in and threw an interception. I'm not sure. I mean, no, he's he's had experience. He's 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 a pretty decent backup, Mitchell. Trubisky. I want Mason um, Rudolph. And go in. Ah. 
<laughs> you know, so I mean, that's all I really have to talk about for this game. Let's, you know, give me one of Sam's little helpers before let's talk about before talk you about put Mitch league. Trubisky back in. I was big on Mitch Trubisky being our backup too. Is the crazy no, thing? I'm really Trubisky's big on good. it as, as a backup quarterback. He's really good. I'm no, because him and him and Justin Herbert share like the same record as a starter. So no, <laughs> like no. And I was big on Justin too. So I, you see where this is going. What about the Colts and the Bucks after the Colts I won mean, 27 to 20? I'll talk about this game a little bit. I mean, in my opinion, Shane Steichen, the coach for the um, – is that how you pronounce his name? I'll say that's how you Yeah, know. Shane Steichen, okay. that's right. May not be, may not be, but I think that that's my coach of the year personally um, in the NFL. I think he's done a They might find job. a way to get in the playoffs. That, they've done a terrific job, all things considered, considering yeah, you they're lost looking really nice. And you have Gardner Minshew, who's, who's, who's played really well. Um, they've been explosive in offense. They've won a lot of key games when it mattered the most. Um, you know, I mean – Give Listen, it to Jonathan I, I Taylor too. I don't love Tampa Bay. Um, I, I still think Baker make Baker has some moxie, and I think can make some plays. But a win's a win. That was a good. That was a good win from Indianapolis. And I think I, personally, that that's my coach of the year. Um, him and D'Amico Ryan's would be my top. Him, D'Amico Ryan's, probably Doug Peterson are my top three. They're actually all from that division. So, um, credit to what they've done in Indianapolis. I think this is this isn't. I, I don't think a, an indictment on. Um, anything on Baker Mayfield. I think they just have a coach right now in Todd Bowles who's just too conservative. I saw that as a Jet fan myself with Todd Bowles. Um, he's just way too conservative for me as a coach for Tampa Bay. Um, and I think the, the coach they have for, for Indianapolis has done a terrific job. And that's definitely the biggest surprise team in the league this season. Yeah, I agree. I literally agree um, with everything. Like, they're going to take, like, the playoff spot, literally. Maybe. Maybe. But, like, yeah. Because that AFC is looking kind of wild. Like, now it's looking crazy. No, there's a lot of teams that, that could could do already. Yo, seriously. And it's looking crazy. But um, even if they did make the playoffs, I'm not big on them. You muted yourself, Aiden. But you were saying, Bars? Uh, um, yeah, like, like they could, like, they could definitely sneak in. But there's a lot of teams that are looking crazy. But even if they got in. I'm not big on Gardner, like you know what I'm saying, like winning me the games. Like I mean, I'm not saying he's a great quarterback, but he's done a really good job. All things and considered. he's a competent running back in, in Zach Moss, who's who's done a good job. You have Pittman Jr. Um, yeah, if I was JT, JT, JT I'd, I'd just got hurt, it. but like I I do think they lack some explosiveness on offense. I do a little bit, um, but I mean, they've, they've done a good job hanging around. He's putting up yards. He's hanging him around. He's keeping him there. He's allowing uh, and. And I mean, he scored a touchdown. And it's too bad. Out. It's actually too bad that they that they that they don't have Anthony Richardson because I actually think they would challenge for the division this year with Anthony Richardson. That Anthony would, Richards. Anthony Richardson's really explosive. Which, I mean, which, whatever, whatever, whatever you want to think about his passing ability, um, the guy the guy moves like a like a freight train. Like, and like, with <laughs> Jonathan Taylor coming back, that yeah, that, they that that's, you know, like, that's why I said that's why I said he should have ended his holdout earlier, Jonathan Taylor, because you got a rookie, you got a rookie head coach who's pretty good, you got a running quarterback who's mobile, you got a wide receiver. You got a pretty decent wide receiver in Pittman. Like there, there's some. You got a complimentary back in Zach Moss, who's who's been awesome this year. So there, there's some pieces there for Indianapolis. Like I, I picked, I picked the Bucks to win this game, but I should, I, I should have known better to pick on Baker every time I knock on him. Like Baker's trash, anyways. But I, I, I should have put this on the Colts as a team to win this, as opposed to Baker being able to get the Buccaneers a win for like literally, um. But Gardner, he gotta be he he scored physically a touchdown, but like he's gotta he's gotta he's gotta put up at least a touchdown or two if he really wants this team to go further though. That's just really it. Um but the same thing goes with my boy Kenny, so I'm not really gonna, you know, knock him too much. It's crazy that the Buccaneers are only a game out of the NFC South. It's still crazy, but that that's that's hard. And speaking and of the at, NFC South. Oh, real quick, Matt, before you get on that, and I'm just I'm just looking at like, you know, the cold schedule and shit. Like they play us after their next game. If I'm correct, um, or sorry, they play the Titans, the Bengals, then they play us, the Falcons, the Raiders, and then they play the Texans. Honestly, their schedule, because the the Falcons are wishy washy, the Raiders are wishy washy. Um, we're gonna be a tough game. The Bengals could be a tough game. The Titans are wishy washy. We'll see what happens. They could probably make a. They could probably make a wild card. Speaking of the NFC South. We have the somebody's got to win this division matchup that took place this past Sunday where the Falcons and the Saints played each other. Falcons got the huge win, and they take the lead in the division officially. 
Hayden, you're very high on the Saints um, earlier I mean, this I've year. I've been very high on the Saints, but they've just been a complete and utter disappointment. Um, Especially I mean, Derek it, Carr. It helps, it helps when two of your next three games are versus the, are versus the Giants and the Panthers, um, two winnable games. I even think Detroit's a winnable game, too, because Detroit has not been playing well. Um, I mean, but also, that being said, if you're if the Falcons play the Jets, who who can't, can't even move the ball on me, so that's a game the Falcons should probably win, too, so... They both have they both have bad schedules. It's going to come down to the, they play the they play the oh my god the Falcons play the the Jets the Buccaneers the the Panthers the, the Bears and the Saints. So they have they they have a bunch of winnable games there too. So I mean, who's going to win this division? Uh, I mean, it's going to come down to the last week of the season, January seventh. So I think both teams are five and six. Probably both teams are going to be like I don't know, like one's going to be like seven and nine. And one's going to be eight and eight, and that's probably going to determine who wins the division. So there's really not much. There's really not much to talk about in terms of this yeah. game. I mean, Derek Carr makes Bro. the big mistakes. Jesse Bates returned that for a pick six. Like it's just one of those teams is just going to luck into the division. Probably like last year, win an eight and nine, and it's and then get kicked out, have, and then you're going to either have you know. Arthur Smith coaching a home playoff game or or Todd Bowles. Or not Todd Bowles, Arthur Smith, or I mean, who knows? Maybe the Buccaneers will get a run. So you're either gonna have Todd Allen. Bowles, Dennis Allen, or Arthur Smith. Probably three of the worst coaches in the league <laughs> playoff game, which is pretty scary. But and it's you know what's crazy about the Falcons too, and figuring out who even their quarterback is. I mean, Desmond Ritter looks like he's the guy for now, but um, if you're going back and forth, I mean, they lose. They lose to the Jets. That they, they might bench their quarterback because you 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 can't lose to the Jets with. I mean, we, to be honest with you, that's a game the Jets. The Jets, knowing the Jets, they'll probably end up winning that game. <laughs> when nobody thinks anything of them, that's the game the Jets usually beat someone. So I don't know. I'm just, I'm just, you know, spitballing there. But there's not really that much to talk about in this game, in my opinion. So, so yeah, why don't we move on to the Titans and the Panthers, where the uh, Titans won 17 to 10? I really thought the, uh, yeah, I the, thought the Panthers Hayden would pick. win this game too, but exactly, I, I did not. I don't know how you guys thought that was going to happen. I don't, I, I, I don't. This is another game. I mean, Will Levis is – it's good to see Will Levis progressing a little bit. Um, Bryce Young continues to struggle. Um, it's looking like a mistake. That's why I thought they were going to win. That is CJ Stroud. But that being said, they just fired the Frank Reich, which is exactly. crazy. 11 games. And they fired someone else too. That was a shocking – I was ridiculous in my opinion. But, I mean, they have one of – they have the worst owner in, in, in sports right now. The, and the they fired the OC with, too. Uh, with um, David, David Tepper. Tepper. Yeah. He's just been atrocious. Yeah, I wanted to get so, into that um, with the firing of Frank awful. Reich. He fired Matt Rule, I think. He fired he fired Matt Rule. He fired David Tepper. He fired um. He's basically fired every coach in season. He he also owns an MLS. No. He fired the coach mid season too. So it's he's he's been a he has no clue what he's doing at all. A couple people got fired, yo. Like <laughs> Deuce Staley got. I'm pretty sure they let Deuce Staley go. Yes, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. yeah they're, they're we'll, coaching we'll, staff. We'll see. Too, we'll yeah. see if that's going to make any difference. But I mean, if I'm a, if I'm a head coaching candidate, that's I do I would be terrified. As a Steelers fan, you know because, I because they the they owner has no patience. Zero. Yeah, patience. he's a, he's a fan. He's a fan who happens to be a billionaire and. You know, buys this toy of his. That's the Carolina Panthers franchise, and it's looking like a mess. They should you know, have the first overall pick. They're they're a mess, and the, the, that's it's funny. a dumpster they're fire. Gonna, they're going to give us uh, the Chicago Bears in a one pick because because the Bears yeah. have their pick. So I mean, but hopefully, hopefully at the end of the year, if you're a if you're a Panthers and Bryce Young at least gives you something to be feel good about going into next year, like he at least plays well towards the end of the season. That's what you want to see. Um, what do you yeah. think they need? Uh, the New Panthers, owner? they need everything. They need offensive skill position players desperately. They need a good running back. Um, they need a better O line. Like they have no. They, they, have some, no they need some solid. Yeah, but you wouldn't go I defensive think, backs. Defense, I think the you? defense is 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 not quite as bad as people think. The defense has played okay this year. Yeah, the but defense. they went and picked up a, a running back that was just in the Super Bowl, didn't they? Or what are you referring to? The Panthers. Who's their running back right now? You're talking about Miles Sanders. Yeah, he's been a very big disappointment. Yeah, yeah, I know. So it's like, it's like, are you gonna get one out the draft? Like, because what happened to Bijan? And then it's like, like, I don't know. Are you gonna pick? They needed someone for the line. Do they need a receiver? Yeah, I, I, I. Uh, it's really too bad. Frank Wright's a good coach. He will pay him. He will get paid at least, but. <sighs> It's you know, 
At the end of the day, I, we've, we've seen, learned that we've it's all about better. Picks, we've seen number one pick struggle. Like, Jared Goff struggled a little bit with Jeff Fisher in his first year and then became a pro bowler and led them to a Super Bowl. So, and Jared Goff right now is one of the, was one of the better quarterbacks in the league till, till they lost to, to, um, indeed, to, indeed. To, indeed. So, and I mean, you, we've seen this before. You got to give a guy a little bit of time. Jury's still out, but hasn't looked know. great so far. It doesn't mean he can't turn. No, no, nothing promising, at least. No, it hasn't and people. And I can't say I won't say the height factor because you know Kyler Murray's returned and he seems okay. He's had an okay NFL career. Maybe he's a, a bit of a jerk, but he can play when it matters the most. So I won't put throw the height factor in, but gotta you gotta step it up these next these last um, four games in the season. Jeez, five games. Um, why don't we talk about speaking of that the Rams and the Cardinals. The Rams stay in the hunt after a stellar four touchdown game by Stafford. And as I say, every single week, the Cardinals are rebuilding. You also didn't talk about Kyron Williams, who rushed for 200. And- That's right. The return was- of Kyron Williams he after being on IR. 43 yards. Um, he had a huge, he had a monster game. 204 yards total with two touchdowns. So he had a huge game. Um, and they're going to be an interesting team going down the stretch. Um, them, and, them and Green Bay are, are going to compete. I think them or Green Bay is going to pass Minnesota for that seventh spot. I do. One of those two teams is going to get it. If I had to say, I would say probably right now. Um, I don't. I, I'm. I really like Jordan Love, so I'd probably say Jordan. I would say the Rams are a slight favorite over over the Rams to get yeah. that seventh spot. Christian but, I mean, Watson. That, that being legit. said, that being said, like the Rams still have Kyron Williams. They got Puka Nakua. Um, they have a Cooper lot. They Cup. actually have weapons on offense. Cup. Um, they have a lot of weapons on offense. That's going to be an interesting team going down the stretch. Higby can uh, be can be a, a an asset when all things uh line up. Such a Obviously, weird Sean McVay and yeah, Sean, yeah, McVay. Sean McVay. So I mean, it's they're going to be a tough team. Two, two, the well. Packers, the Packers have the head to head over the Rams, which is I think something that's going to be, you know, looked at. Mm-hmm. I mean, if you ask me, the Rams could beat them. The Packers easy. I mean, uh, the Packers beat the Rams this year, twenty to three. So like, you know, did they have Cup then? I believe they did, yeah. Uh, I don't know then. Maybe, yeah, they, they had a cup that day. They had a cup that day. They they held them to two yards for 48, two receptions for 48 yards. And we'll they, also, they also had Brett Ripien playing at quarterback instead of instead that's of That's what I'm saying. So that, that, that's, like... that's also a difference maker. But, I mean, I would I would take Carolina. I would not Carolina. I would take um, Green Bay over over um, over Minnesota. I don't think Minnesota is going to hold on to that sentence, but I don't. Um, there's just too many question marks going on with the quarterback play there in, in Minnesota, in my opinion, for them to hold that last spot. I think Green, Green Bay is a better is a in better position to get that last spot. Green Bay and LA are in better positions to get that spot than uh than um than Minnesota. The, uh, than if Minnesota. they had Justin, I mean, I, Justin, I also even with the returning here, Justin Jefferson. I want to see also what Seattle does. Returning? To be honest with you, because I think the Seahawks yes. are a little bit inconsistent, but I mean, hopefully they can. If the Seattle plays their game, I think the Seattle should make the playoffs this year, but. They also have they also have Dallas and and the 49ers coming up, so I think you got to win at least one of those two games, which is probably the Dallas one is the better bet. I mean, um, you get Dallas, you get Dallas, Seattle, you got Dallas, the 49ers, and the Eagles in three straight games. Yep. So the scheduling gods did not they didn't give uh, Seattle any any uh, any shortcuts. And also the uh, with Kenneth Walker being out. That's a huge Someone, Someone's game. gonna make the playoffs that nobody thought was gonna make the playoffs in the, in the NFC. Somebody yeah. is. Um that's and I, you know, that's why, like with these games, that's why, you know, the Giants you still gotta win a couple of these games. Like you never know. Meaningful December games. That's the name of the that's that's what we look for, forward to. And why don't we now transition? Because we actually just hit all the Sunday games to the Packers and Lions, where the Packers won 29 to 22. Lions did make a little bit of a push at the end, but the Packers dominated and um, throughout most of the game. And it's games like this where people feel that the Lions, even if they are, let's say, a top three team getting into going into the um, wild card weekend and maybe even host a wild card game. But am, man, it's games like I this. Am- they, 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 they so, people don't think that, that they're one and done. I am so jealous of the Green Bay Packers because you go from uh, Favre, who's a Hall of Famer, um, 
Aaron Rodgers, who's one of the greatest quarterbacks ever, and the fact that you get Jordan Love, who has the same amount of passing yards, touchdowns, and record as Aaron, as Aaron Rodgers did for the first 11 games of his career as a Packer. So it's it's unbelievable. Um, Who knows Jordan how to Love uh, has, GM over there. Jordan Love has been, has been pretty good. Um, he's really come alive. I mean, you saw that first pass of the game that was a 60-yard bomb to Christian Watson. I mean, the guy has on talent galore. Um, so, I mean, I'm just so jealous of, of that team, which has three quarterbacks that are – Incredible in the pocket. I don't know if Jordan Love is going to be that guy, but I mean, he's he's been very good this season, and you have to love the signs that he's shown you. That's probably that's why you draft the quarterback at that high to, to begin with. That's why you can never have too many good quarterbacks. That's why you draft the quarterback early, even let him sit on the bench. All right, and know how to protect Jordan Love too. This and if Aaron Jones I mean, can stay healthy. That'll be a big and, asset you know, as well. I don't really think this is an indictment on Detroit. I think Detroit will get in the playoffs. I mean, I think they have enough off weapons on offense. Like, they're going to have to win a couple of these games coming up. I mean, but this is definitely leading some of the Lion fans to say, like, is this really going to happen again? Where we're going to? I don't. I think, I think they'll mm-hmm. win some of the next couple of games coming up. Whether they beat the Saints, the Bears, um, the Bears. That's not a winnable game. That's not an easy win though for the Bears because the, the Bears should have beaten the Lions. Um, so I think they'll win the next. I think they'll beat the, the Vikings once or twice. Should beat the Bears. Should beat the the Lions. I should beat the Saints. I mean, so I, I, think, I think I think Detroit will get in. But that being said, they're not doing themselves any favors by winning by losing a couple of these winning winnable games. What and divisional games at that? So it's also again we will have this conversation in a few weeks. It's if they can, no doubt. I think there's no doubt that they will make the playoffs. But can they can? But can they at least make it to the divisional round? That is the question. All right. Moving on to the next Thanksgiving game, and um, that those Packers and Lions, Jack Harlow's awful halftime show has to be addressed. It was awful. Yeah, it was terrible. I didn't watch it. I mean, I don't really care enough about the halftime show to be honest. But it was terrible. His stage was about the size of like this big, and Dolly <laughs> like like this big. I don't. Know. I was gonna say good transition. Dolly Parton, the Dallas Cowboy cheerleader, seventy-seven years old, look like she has a body of a twenty-five-year-old. I mean, and you know, I, I I'm not gonna comment on that, but uh, I'm sure I'm sure um, we all will age gracefully like that. But I hope I hope I age like that. But the game here with the Cowboys dominating the Commanders by a score of 45 to 10, it's just, just another example of the Cowboys beating I mean, down another bad yeah, team. Yeah, it's, it's pretty yeah. much another. But I mean, that, that being said, that, that Prescott's playing at like an another day level. So you got to you gotta look at that and say, you got to be really pleased at what you see from Dak Prescott as a, as a Cowboy. No! Dak Prescott, he's, he's been really good. Like, I'm no, sorry. Yeah, he has he's been really good. He has, no he has been really good. Like, I mean, that, Dak has been. With the exception of know. some turnovers, With the exception he's played. Of that, he's that definitely played an now. MVP. And, no, I mean, that being said, he, he has 23 touchdowns, six interceptions, teams. a passer rating of 107.4. Like even in that game versus Philly, he played incredibly well. So you got to be really pleased that at least if you don't win what? this season, it won't be because you're. It won't be because of your quarterback. Yo, like last year, they won in spite of Dak. This year, they're winning because of him. You cannot. You like that, that I think is the difference between this year and last year. Stop praising these dudes when they win against bad teams. What do you want them to lose against what bad teams? What do you want teams? to do? You, you, you no, got to beat the I'm you got to beat the teams I'm that saying, are on your yo, schedule. I'm saying we can't be like yo. You got to be happy for what right, no, no, no. no. Listen, he's listen, supposed listen, to you, you be, beat yo. You beat the we've been talking about Dak Prescott for so long. Yards. We the should Rams expect him to beat that team, team down like that. Beat, we beat, should expect beat, him to be doing good. Yo, listen. When he beat the 49ers, when he beat the Eagles, let's talk. Let's you know. Oh yeah. Listen, Dak listen. Prescott. Versus the Eagles, like, listen. Versus the Eagles, he threw for 373 yards and three touchdowns and no picks. He had a phenomenal game versus the Eagles. Like, what do you want to do? What do you want them to do? I want them to they win. Didn't, they didn't win that. They didn't I not win that win. game because of Dak. Dak. Dak I defense didn't give up. Dak didn't give up those points on defense. I, I, yo, you're right. You're right. You're right. You right. I want the Cowboys. Listen, in this total is the difference this year. But when last year they're winning because of their quarterback, and in, in, where last year they were winning in spite of him. Until the playoffs come around, and he pulls a James Harden. Listen, I, see what's I, up. I, I right now I would, I would say San Francisco and. Philadelphia are, are better right now. I, I would be- come on, man. San Even on paper. Are better. Not, not, just on but paper. that being said, if, but that being said, Dak Prescott versus Dak Purdy, I think is a much closer. I think it's a closer conversation yeah. here than it was last yeah. year. I'll give you that. I'll give you that. And Jalen Hurts, be- hasn't, I mean, I love Jalen Hurts. I think he's my MVP this year, but like Jay, their, their offense hasn't been like scary good this season. So 
It's not like they don't need to be scary Dallas, good when win. they can touch push you to fake. No, I, I, I listen. I'm not disagreeing with you. I'm, ju- I'm just giving you the reasons why I think push push to the green. To be, I'm giving the reason for Dallas fans to be a little hopeful going into going into the playoffs. Now, I don't give Dallas hopes. No fans. No fans. No hopes for Dallas. You're y'all gonna get to the playoffs to lose every year. That is the curse. Take it or leave it. I mean, eventually one of these 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 years are gonna break through. Eventually. Well, nah, they be for a long time. Man, send the boys out to the pasture. What's next? I, th- I think as I think as long as the Cowboys, d- what is the rest of the schedule? Let me see really quick. And no, the Cowboys have a couple of difficult games coming up. They play. See, I know they play Seattle coming up recently. Um, yes. Yeah. They, Seattle's they of, next this uh, this Thursday. That, Thursday that's, night that's, a di- that's a difficult game. Seattle versus Dallas. At home. Um, they play the Eagles, so like they have some tough games coming up. So it's like yeah. you're going to see who what Dak really is coming up. Exactly. Yeah. Eagles, Eagles, Cowboys, Bills, the Dolphins, the Bills, the Lions. Dolphins. Bro, they I said up. this. I said this earlier the show, and I'm going to say it again now. We gonna have this conversation again. We gonna talk about this again. This is going. This is all going down for posterity. So we gonna talk about this again. The ultimate test is Sunday night, December tenth. Against the Eagles, where the Eagles no, could. No, I don't agree with you on that. I think the ultimate test is versus the Dolphins. Oh, the Dolphins. The Dolphins are really good, bro. The Dolphins are scary good. But but, but in this sense, for teams. the for the divisional matchup, for the divisional and... matchup, yeah. But you have two games where I, I think the the two games that are biggest this year are Eagles and, and Detroit because those are the two teams in your conference that are really coming at you. Yeah, exactly. You must have so had that's something why to drink I think. The show, I think I if Dak, Dak Miami's pretty good, bro. Off. I mean, you can say what you want, but like Miami, you had a drink before the show. I need some. Miami's really good, bro. If, like, if I, you know. uh, no, you're, you're I, I don't disagree. That's a big game, but with the big prime time matchup on Sunday night, mid December, that's going to be a game that Dak can earn some respect and uh, get some kudos and some praise, and no doubt that uh, Christmas Eve game against the Dolphins is very big. But I think if they could defeat the Eagles on going on, ah, they could defeat the Eagles at home. That'll that'll speak a lot. And um, if you could beat the Dolphins on Christmas Eve, that'll be icing on the cake. Okay. So, 49ers beat the Seahawks by a score of thirty-one to thirteen. No pre- a big division game as well, and the 49ers took care of business from the start. Christian McCaffrey was a dog. George Kittle, a dog. Um, Geno Smith was struggling all game. And um, I guess, yeah, that's the real question is where are the Seahawks going? I think Seahawks can can still make a push yeah, as I long as the they Seahawks stay in the make hunt. A push as well. Um, but this is more just a game how dominant the 49ers were. Yeah. I don't Watch really out have, for them. I don't and really the, have much to say. They loaded on both sides of the ball. Um, they're the most talent, in my opinion, they're the most talented team on both sides of the ball. Not saying they're the team that's going to win, but that's on paper they're the most talented team in the league. The big game of the week this week is 49ers and Eagles. I'm sure one of you guys picked them as your thriller of the week, but um, we'll see what happens there. So the final game to discuss Monday Night Football, the Chicago Bears defeated the Minnesota Vikings, which was a game where you wanted to pull your hair out the Pastronauts, four interceptions in one game. That's, uh, I mean, he obviously he's had quite a roller coaster season, literally uh, going from one part of the country to the other, but keeping the Vikings in it. And very surprising against an anemic Bears team that he would struggle like he did at home. I mean, oh, is this the what game? Yeah, this oh, game? this is for the for the Bears and Vikings. Oh no, this was just an awful game all around. Um, yeah. I have I have limited faith in Josh Dobbs now. Um, I I think the Minnesota is going to fall off. Hopefully, Justin Jefferson helps them, but and now I, they fall off the cliff. Like yeah, I said, I mean, yeah, I just I it was it was a nice story now, but like I just don't see them really competing that much with with this guy quarterback. I don't. It's just it's it's sad because Kirk Cousins was playing as one of the best quarterbacks in the league. If you have Kirk Cousins, they're 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 an obvious playoff team. Um, and I, I honestly think you're really you're really seeing what like Kirk Cousins missing him what 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 the happens to this franchise because Kirk Cousins is a beast when he's healthy. Crazy enough, those that's actual facts, and I won't disagree with that Kirk Cousins statement because I find Kirk Cousins sometimes wishy washy, but statistically, Dude, he's since he's been in Minnesota, he's, he's a beast. 
Remember when people people said Kirk Cousins to the Jets? (laughs) Remember that? I mean, that's all. I mean, Justin Fields, luckily, hopefully you win some games down the stretch. I mean, that that, that win probably saved Matt Everfluss' job. But the fact that it was a 12-10 game when you turn – when you turn uh, Josh Dobbs over four times in a dome is pretty is pretty pretty bad. But I mean, yeah, that's that's all I really have to say about this game. All right, why don't we just go into our picks then? If you remember, we're picking three games. The game of the week where we think it'll be a lot of fun, the thriller of the week, if you will, the game that's going to be special. What right, are we? Uh, what are our picks for this? All right, one I'm gonna that? give you my um. I'll give you my lock. I'll give you my um. My I'll give you my lock. My upset of the week, and then I'll give you my favorite game of the week. So hold on, just give me one second. My my computer's loading. So what we oh, doing? Good. We doing dud game of the week and upset. Yes. All right. My computer's about to die too. So if it dies, I'll. All right, we got to make this quick then. Um. Hayden, why don't you, um, if you have it in front of you, why don't you tell us those three games? Um, all right, just one second, just loading. Okay. Um, I mean, my game, my game of the week. Um, I'll give you my game of the week. I think I'm gonna give you my game of the week is gonna be the. Um, I actually think this is gonna be a really good game. Actually, I think people aren't gonna. I think the 49ers Eagles should be the game of the week. I'll give I'll give that as my game of the week. Um, the. I'll give you my upset of the week. Upset of the week. I'm going to take the um give me the Saints over the Lions this week. That that will be my upset of the week. Good pick. And, and then uh the, the lock of the week. If I'm gonna give you if I'm gonna give you a lock, um I have the Rams beating the uh the Browns as my lock as as my lock of the week, actually, surprisingly. Um, uh, I'll give me the Rams over the Browns as my lock. Give me the 49ers Eagles as my game of the week. And then, uh, and then my upset, I'm going to give the, uh, Saints over, Saints over the lines. Like it. I like it. Bars. What do you got to do? What are you okay. going to do? Um, for my game of the week, I'm going to do 49ers and Eagles as well. I think that's going to be a great game. Um, it's really going to get, it, it, it's going to show us two high powered offenses, two high power defenses. We're gonna see what's up. The NFC NFC um powerhouse is gonna go at it. Um for my upset of the week, I'm gonna go Chiefs Packers with the Packers upsetting the Chiefs, yo. Like I really Ooh, why see is that. that. Um Justin Justin That's a good upset. I was Jordan Love take the uh the, the Packers over the Chiefs. Jordan one. Love is on a nice little rise right now. Um his last game, he looked Way more poised than he's ever had. Like, like he was he was delivering. He, they beat the Lions. They beat the Lions. Like the Lions beat themselves, but the Green but Green Bay had some assistance in that butt whooping. So, like that, I'm gonna, I'm gonna choose them for my upset of the week, and for my game to avoid or uh, the dud, like, uh. Mm. I'm gonna go with shoot. I, I don't know. I'm gonna go with Dolphins Commanders. Stay away from that game. Uh, they probably got Dolphins like taking the spread and all that stuff. I think the Commanders like pull out a cheeky little win, mess up Dolphins whole game. All right, now and I'll end it off with the upset of the week. It is going to be the New England Patriots defeating the Los Angeles Chargers at home. Only six point underdogs. I think they can easily get that game going, and I think they can win by as much as a touchdown. And don't be surprised if that is the case. If Brandon Stanley is joining the unemployment line and he will lose his job after losing to a two and nine Patriots team. Moving on from your upset to your lock of the week, I am going to put myself out there and say that the Miami Dolphins are going on the road to handle the Washington the Washington Commanders pretty mightily, where I expect them to continue this amazing offensive run that they have going for them. I expect the Commanders to continue with their struggles and not being able to catch up with people like Jalen Waddle and Tyreek Hill. 
And I just think it'll be another great game for Tua where he makes his push to oh, be your good. MVP of the season. A good a good lock of the week would have been the Jaguars over the Bengals too. But I didn't, you know yeah, what? so Monday night, that's almost a uh, – g- And my, my, is dud, a my dud of the week is going to be the Jets Falcons. I think that's going to be the worst game of the weekend because they're just both oh. – <laughs> I mean, oh, so if we're doing that, my lock of the week is the Cardinals Steelers. And I think the Steelers repeat another 400 yard performance. And this time, Kenny Pickett puts like multiple touchdowns up on the board. All right. We'll go with the Super Bowl rematch on that one. Good, good. And then for me, the throw, the thriller of the week, it's obvious. It's the San Francisco 49ers and the Philadelphia Eagles, where San Francisco is actually opening as a three point favorite on the road. And I think they could cover that spread. And it's a goal, it's going to be a game down the wire. They are having beef on social media. Uh, the 49ers are very salty after losing Brock Purdy, thanks to Miles Jack. Not sorry, not Miles Jack, thanks to Hassan Reddick taking out Brock Purdy and breaking his elbow in the first quarter of the NFC Championship. And I think they are going to get their revenge as the Eagles embarrass the 49ers on their turf. The 49ers are going to take care of the Eagles on their turf instead. It's going to be a fun game. I can't wait to talk about it all next week. And Hayden Bars, you guys did an cr- incredible job as always. Um, Can I get the play of the week? What's your play of the week, Bars? Play of the week got to be Jalen um, Jalen Hurts for the go-ahead touchdown in um, overtime for running that in. I think that's got to be the play of the week right now. All right, interesting stuff. I like it. Uh, I don't disagree. Hayden and Bars, great job. We are now heading into lucky week 13, and let us see how everything unfolds. Bars and Hayden, we'll see you very soon. Yo, have a good night, man. Everybody stay strong.